Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you. Probe into Odisha train tragedy opens, trains resume operations. Imran Khan accuses Pakistan military of trying to destroy his party. And Nepal opposition accuses PM Dehel of being total sellout to India. And now for all the details. Trains resumed back on track in Odisha's Balasore district where at least 275 people were killed in one of India's deadliest train accidents nearly 50 hours after the incident happened. Around 1,200 people were injured when a passenger train hit a stationary freight train, jumped the tracks and hit another passenger train passing in the opposite direction. The tracks were cleared and repaired after non-stop efforts over the weekend. Officials said about 100 unclaimed bodies of the train crash victims were sent to various hospitals across the state. hospital. Meanwhile, an official investigation into the crash also began on Monday after preliminary findings pointed to signal failure as the likely cause for the collision. State-run Indian Railways, which says it transports more than 13 million people every day, has been working to improve its patchy safety record blamed on aging infrastructure. And India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Monday held a bilateral meeting with his US counterpart Lloyd Austin, who was on two-day visit to New Delhi. A statement said both the sides discussed a substantial range of bilateral defence cooperation issues. A roadmap for US-India defence industrial cooperation was also concluded during the ministerial feat. Washington is working to deepen ties with India and sees deeper military-to-military -military and technology ties with the South Asian country as a key counterweight to China's dominance in the region. Well, Pakistan's embattled ex-PM Imran Khan has accused the country's military and its intelligence agency, ISI, of openly trying to destroy his PTI party and that he had no doubt he would be tried in a military court and thrown in jail. Khan has hinted previously at the military's hand in a crackdown on his party, but his comments this weekend were the most blunt yet. It is completely the establishment. I mean... Established obviously means the, the military establishment because they are really now openly, I mean, it's, it's not even hidden now, they're just out in the open. The threats now and the, and the uh, you know, two of my senior members went to a, a call by the ISI for talks, who had nominated for talks. And when they went, they just, they shut them up and said, look, you'll only leave unless you renounce being part of PTI. A bruising year-long standoff between Khan and the army came to a head when military buildings and property were ransacked last month, allegedly by supporters of his arrest in a corruption case. Authorities have begun the process of trying dozens of people, including his party members, suspected of involvement in the protest in the military court, usually reserved only for service members or those categorized as enemies of the state. And the two UN bodies, the World Food Programme and the Food and Agricultural Organization in a report have said that Pakistan and its neighbor Afghanistan are among the countries with acute food shortages. The report predicts a worse future for both the countries if the economic and political crisis further deepens. Pakistan, which is grappling with acute balance of payment crisis, has to repay $77.5 billion debt over the next three years. In Afghanistan, the Taliban, which seized power in 2021, has not been recognized yet by any foreign government. The report states approximately 15.3 million Afghan people are estimated to face high acute food insecurity between May and October 2023, including just 2.8 million people in emergency. A potential drop in foreign earnings from humanitarian funding and exports, as well as the impact of the ban on female aid workers, could result in a worsening of acute food insecurity, the report states. 
and commenting on the new U.S. visa policy to promote democratic elections in Bangladesh, PM Sheikh Hasina has said that there was no use worrying about visas and sanctions. Hasina said it did not matter to all if someone did not go to the U.S. after a 20-hour plane journey. As per the new policy, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said Washington will restrict visas for Bangladeshis who undermine the democratic election process in their home country. The restrictions could apply to anyone belonging to the government, judiciary, law enforcement agencies or the opposition. Hasina said Bangladesh will run on its own feet and will not be dependent on others who impose sanctions on us. The Dhaka Tribune quoted her as saying. She also advised the United States to look which party has rigged votes in the past, a reference made to the opposition BNP. And while Nepal's PM Pushkamal Dehel has called his India visit successful, opposition parties have accused him of being a sellout to the neighboring nation. Opposition members expressed objections over Dehel's refusal to raise the border dispute with India, the Kathmandu Post reported. Dehel had suggested the dispute can be solved by gaining a land link to Bangladesh via the southern neighbor. The opposition also demanded the government to clarify why the citizenship bill was authenticated just hours before the health visit to New Delhi. India, the biggest economic and trade partner of Nepal, has invested billions of dollars in the Himalayan nation's infrastructure as it looks to counter the influence by China among its smaller neighbors. And as people across the globe mark the World Environment Day, scores of residents of New Delhi cleaned the banks of River Yamuna in the city and formed a human chain to spread awareness about saving the river from toxic foam. Take a look. Dozens of people formed a human chain along the banks of River Yamuna in New Delhi to spread awareness about saving the river from toxic foam on the eve of the World Environment Day on Sunday. The volunteers performed various rituals to mark the initiative and also clean the banks of the river. For decades, residents have suffered with the river's filthy and stinking waters, matted with garbage and polluted with toxic effluent from industry. From its source among the Himalayan peaks, the river Yamuna meanders 855 miles through a clutch of northern states to join the river Ganga in the city of Prayagraj, where the Hindu tradition says the two merge with a third one, the mythical Saraswati River. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see the same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.